<laughs> okay. Um, hi, you guys. Welcome to Harness Your Inner Fire. And look, I got a new gong. It's tiny. This one is desktop. Hi, cat. Here. Oh, that's so funny. They're doing some uh, road work outside. Like we live on the world's tiniest dead end road in the middle of nowhere. And yet all week long, they've been doing road repairs. Um, so uh, there's a little beep, beep, beep of them backing up just as I did this. This sweet little gong is in the key of C. And I moved my fan and then it got bigger. It's in the key of C. So it's about spreading love, harmonious love with the frequency. So. It sounds a little bit tinny because it's a small like tabletop gong, but um, it's uh, it, it doesn't sound, uh, this, one of the things about gong healing that's different from singing bowl healing is um, it doesn't do the notes of C, that's the key of C, and it has different notes that play, so it can go anywhere from like a to f a b c d e like mostly a to e but in the key of c so you get a little bit of res resonance and frequency this is one reason gongs are awesome um because while you're playing the singing bowls with different notes you hit the gong and it harmonizes with all the notes of the singing bowl hi kids Hello. Uh, oh my God, we got Kit and Cat here. I'm sorry, you guys. I just had to mention that because that's adorable. Um, so today we are going to um, continue the harness your inner fire. And I promise no politics, no politics. Uh, if you're looking for my uh, Voices of Freedom series, we already did that this morning. I talked with Will Power Harris, who is, he's got some really inspirational messages to share. And um, so you can go on my Facebook page and by tomorrow, my YouTube page where we'll have that. But today, this moment, it's about frequency. So here's the thing. I was talking with my, um, Oh, before I get that, those of you who are with me last week know we were in the middle of the meditation. Like we just got above the crown chakra when my internet went out, you know, and um, so today I'm hardwired in. It's raining outside. We've got thunderstorm going on, so I'm not going to be outside. Yet they're out there doing road work. <laughs> it's not fun for them. So I've got the uh, Ethernet cable in. So when our frequency gets up, we should not blow the internet. Hi, Beata. Um, and so last night, today we're going to finish going up in our chakra, and then we're going to go down into earth. So you can feel the difference of tapping in this way and tapping in that way. And um, last night with our Pranashakti masterclass, which... Some of you were there and may remember. Um, we were talking about karmic healing and um, the global concept of, oh my God, my mom's walking the dog on the street. It's sometimes it's very strange to be in a room and look out the window and see your life in the window while you're here in the room. So, um, hi, Nazi. Um, 
so it's it's and this morning the librarians were talking about threading time so those of you who are in the akashic message circle um and i'll put, for those of you who aren't you know like wait what why aren't i in this i'll put a link to it um today this morning they gave a video on how to thread time so you can bring the power of the past to the present and bring the future where you're very successful with your goals to the present and stitching them all together so that while you're in the moment trying to make things happen you are amped up you have extra battery power going um it's just like a 13 minute video but it's like packed with with technical knowledge so um what was I saying? Last night, a Prana Shakti masterclass. Um, and those of you who are in it, I apologize for the repetition. We were talking about the Atma Chakra the, and the Atma Line, the cord of energy that connects you to your soul on up to the divine, to the creator, to source. And um, we... Um, um oh cat it says you were with us this morning awesome awesome oh no with mariam oh that was a good interview too mariam sardari earlier in the week was talking about the immigration experience to the u.s and um so anyway so we're doing the chakra connection it's a couple of feet above the crown chakra you have the part of your um energy that connects you to your soul. And it's also the part that connects you to your karmic energy. So if you um, if you want healthier karmic experience, if you want to learn lessons the easy way, as opposed to, oh my God, I thought I learned this lesson already and here I am back again. Oh my God, this is so hard. If you want to get rid of that energy and take it up to an energy where um, each lesson, you're like, oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Yeah. And I'm just moving on to like, I'm going to apply what I need, release what I need and get on to something better because there's so much good stuff waiting for me. Then you want to work with your chakras outside of your body. And the first one, the one closest to your crown is the one that deals with karma. So like, you know, this is like a really important thing. And in a previous class, you may recall, I put in some photographs from like uh, this book, Your Sacred Anatomy with Desda Zuckerman. If you go on her website, yoursacredanatomy.com, or if you go find her on YouTube, you'll get a lot of amazing material. So this book, it's a little bit pricey. It's like $60, $70. It's a wealth of knowledge, um, but it's a commitment because then it's like intense reading. So um, I would suggest before making any commitment, go and check out the smaller, quicker bites of information she has to share. And if you go on her website, you can download all the images that I posted in the previous class. So this is how Desda sees people when she looks at them, just like when I look at you, I see your past lives behind you. When she looks at you, she basically sees the energy of your soul that's around you. So as you see in this image, there's a person in the middle. And then for about 20 feet in each direction, there's layers of energy that is um, as much you as you are. So, you know, like when you meet someone and you just harmonize, you're like, oh, my God, I feel so good when I'm around this person their sacred energy, their sacred anatomy is in beautiful resonance with yours and it amplifies it. And there are people you're around, you're like, they just get on my nerves. I, you know, a nice person, but I just can't be around them or ugh, they drag me down. Their energy is out of frequency, frequency with yours. Um, I mean, that's like very basic. So when you are doing this chakra energy work each chakra in your body connects to a part of your body that's outside of your body 
And when you're calling on the chakras above your body and below your body, you are also bringing an energy, not just through your body, but your energetic anatomical being around your body. You're creating a beautiful, like flowing, powerful emanation, a buffer of energy around you. And when you get good at that, you don't ever need to protect yourself at all. Wherever you go, it's just, trust me, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. So you see this, each layer of the around the body connects to the energy in the body and the energy flowing down from your soul into your body. So we no longer need to think of our body and judge ourselves just on this. We also think about this. And the more love and power and energy you put into around this, the easier it is for you to attract what you want on your life path ahead of you and for you to be aware of your sensors are better, you're more protected, it makes your life path flow. And what did I say? Above your crown chakra is your atma chakra, your karmic chakra. So if that one is beautifully aligned and flowing and sending good energy in, um, just think about how your karmic well-being is enhanced. And then below your body, right below your root chakra, and keep in mind your root chakra can go as deep and wide as you want. You can, um, you can do meditations where your root chakra literally ends up filling the entire planet, where you are sending your energy all the way around the earth or through the earth. Um, you can do the one where you just send a line down to the core of the earth. Keep in mind, that's like if you have a balloon on a string, it doesn't stabilize you, but it does like give you an interesting journey going through all the layers of earth, both physical, emotional, spiritual, you know, it's quite a journey to the core of molten lava. But if you're looking to be stabilized, it's not stabilizing because you can still, ooh, um, if you're looking to stabilize, have your root chakra support your energetic work and send it out like a cone deep and wide. And you can always send it wider and wider and wider. You can wrap it around the earth or send it cut through the earth. You can have it go, oh, I want to go around this and then I'm going to come in here and then go, you know, you can do what you want. Neither is better or worse than the other. They're all experiences. You put the right energy into the right experience. Hi, Debbie, we're just talking about the energy above and below, the chakras above and below the body. Uh, so for the purpose of, oh, so the chakra below your root chakra is earth magic. This is a chakra that connects you with like the animal totems and the one below, you know, and, and, you know, the surface nature, like the trees, the plants, rivers, um, you know, clouds, uh, animals, worms, insects, bacteria. If you go below that, it connects you to like the crystals then you're going into deep earth magic. So if you want to go into like sacred crystalline caves to meet with animal spirit guides and to have a powerful spirit journey, you will power up the two chakras below your body. And send your root chakra at that point, if you want an amazing journey, send it both out wide and send a line straight down. And then you're like, wow, that's full connection. Um, so if, and here's why I'm mentioning these two experiences at once, it's not because of my ADHD. <laughs> um, hi Lupe, good morning. It is so wonderful to see you. <laughs> so if you 
open up the chakra, open up your crown and send it up high and wide. Of course, your root chakra, before you open your crown, send your root chakra deep and wide. And then you open your crown, send it high and wide. Activate the energy of your crown, the opening of your physical body so that all the spiritual yumminess becomes one with you. And then you open up your karmic chakra, which is above the crown. And that opens to the energy around you. So you're now flowing with energy this way and this way, not just like a waterfall, it's going through all the networks of your energetic grid around you, and which also then goes down and deep. You see, like here, we're kind of spherical in shape. So it's going through and around. So you might, I mean, I've said this before, if your crown chakra is feeling compressed, like too much is coming through, you can invite it to slow down. Or you can, if your crown chakra is going in and your root chakra is going out, so you look like an hourglass, expand the middle so that the energy is just flowing and you're like a little physical body in the middle of a giant tube system of energy or what are we creating? I've been very sneaky. I've been guiding you to this because this is how we are. You may not see it that way. I mean, when I see people, I don't see the sacred anatomy. I see the physical form and their past lives standing behind them. But um, I imagine myself just free floating in this tube of energy or a container of energy that's got opening and closed, but I'm safe and always like bobbing in the middle of it. At which point you can start expanding your physical body energetically if you want the energy in your physical, you know, you can play with it. But for this, if your karmic chakra is strong, enhanced and flowing, it's sending good life path and soul contract energy to you. That allows your guardian angels to really kick it up a notch and give you warnings of like, get away from here or do this or don't do that. Or, hey, have you thought about this? Like, and they make your um, $35, cat. That's awesome. That's awesome. You see, here's what I love about Dessa Zuckerman. Um, and I've never met her personally, although I have taken some of her online programs. But um, I do some work with um, Jean-Marie Klitzner, who's going to join me uh, next week on Sunday to... Um, she is also like someone, uh, a seer, like I am. So we're going to talk about our visions of the future. Jean-Marie works with Desda and uh, studies directly with her and practices with her. Um, so she's an expert on this. So Jean-Marie is my go-to gal for all of this. But Desda wants the world to know about this. So she has over time just like really reduced her prices and you know, this book is not something you crank out in a week. This is a lifetime of effort. So very, very cool. Anyway, I'm not doing a sales pitch, but I'm just super impressed when someone says it's more important for people to know this than for me to just be like, you know, me, me, whatever. She's like all about everyone else, which is how we all want to be, right? Okay, so if you're guardian angels are able to talk with you more. They speak a lot through your sacral chakra, you know, your gut instinct. They speak a lot with a, I don't know, that doesn't resonate or, oh, that feels right. You know, harmonizing in your heart chakra. They speak in your third eye, giving you little visions or like questions that pop in your mind of like, wait, before I do something, I just want to know. They, they alert, they're able to become very alert. You still have free will, but you now have a lot more um, data and guidance available to you. And if 
your chakra above your crown is wide open and your chakra below your feet is wide open, your animal spirit guides can give you guidance as well. Your animal spirit guides and your crown chakra can work in hand, or I mean your atma chakra, your karma and your totems can work in tandem with each other. So you're getting a balance of messages, right? Because your, um, your karmic chakra might say, oh, this will be a good lesson for you to learn. A good lesson doesn't necessarily mean a pleasant lesson, right? The animal totems may say, that's fine, but we'd like to lead you on a path to a slightly different way. Instead of falling on your face, maybe you can meet this mentor who can explain it to you before you go forward. So they work in tandem together with different frequencies and different priorities, all for your well-being and your personal growth, right? But from slightly different perspectives. So it gives you, you know, not an angel and devil on your shoulder, but an angel and an earth magic animal on your shoulder. And remember, we've talked about how the chakras work in tandem, the crown chakra and the root chakra. While they're separate chakras, they're also the two sides of one chakra. You know, um, the solar plexus and the sacral work in tandem. They're two sides of one chakra. The heart and the third eye work in tandem in that you feel and you see and they work together. And your throat, your pineal gland, very important to work together, but the throat and your stomach chakra, which is like between the sacral and the uh, solar plexus, uh, they work together a lot. So karma and earth magic love to work together. It amplifies their effect and their power and their support. Plus it builds a beautiful structure of powerful, just loving energy all around you. That just makes life more enjoyable. No matter what situation you're going through, it doesn't mean all the situations are enjoyable, but it means your connection with them can be more beautiful, more enjoyable. Um, so let's um, do a meditation where we're going to power up pretty quick because we've been working together a few months by now. You know, you guys should be comfortable powering up your senses. Um, if you're fairly new to us, I'll put a link in the comments to, um, I've been saving all the videos on my website, so I'll put a link to that. It's a free program in my online school. Um, so you can go and catch up, or if you've been doing this, but you want to go back and enjoy some old meditations, you can grab them there. Um, also, I have some, like, I've been teaching this sort of program for a number of years, um, so I have some older videos from uh, when I've taught this in classrooms at wellness centers. So, you guys, let's get comfortable, and I'm going to put Desda away. Love you, Desda. Time to go. And bring back. My beautiful key of C gong. So this gong plays the notes from like A to E, but it's in the key of C, so it's about love. We're going to invite love to fill our bodies. So everyone relax, give your bodies permission to relax. Breathe however you normally and comfortably breathe. From the top of your head, all the way through your body, down to your tippy toes, and then back up or in a circle. Give your body a few gentle scans, just going down, 
where if you find any pressure or tension or pain, discomfort blocks, acknowledge them. Thank you for being one with you. Give them permission to resolve themselves. If any of them are asking for your permission to relax or release, go away, acknowledge them again and give them this permission. Invite the frequency of love to flow through your body. Invite the love to come in through the light and airy top of your head, fill your mind, Flow gently through your body, swirling around, flowing, emanating out, flowing down, down through your feet, deep into earth. Invite your root chakra to expand out deep and wide. Invite the bottom of your feet to open up, relax. Let all the energy that's in your body just drain down, flow down, down through the bottom of your feet, deep into earth. They're our beloved Pacamama, Gaia, absorbs this energy, fills herself up with it, transmutes it to the highest frequency of love, and then sends it out deep into earth to share with all of your nature, brothers and sisters. I invite the top of your head to feel very light, airy and tingly. Invite your crown chakra to just spread up high and wide so that all of the beautiful cosmic love, divine love, source, angelic, universal love from the dimensions, from the stars, can flow into the light and airy top of your head, fill your scalp, and your skull, filter around your mind, activating your third eye and your pineal gland, flowing in through your cheeks, your jaw, down your spine and your neck, flowing down, down, down through your body, down deep into earth. So beautiful. Just take a moment, let the energy flow. If you find any blocks or shards or pain or pressure, give it permission to resolve itself and invite it 
to release itself to the current of love energy flowing through you so it can be swept up and washed away. Washing away the pain does not wash away your connection to what you love. It will just give you greater ease to resolve any issues without being hampered by discomfort or discontent. Let the energy flow, flow, flow. Invite your crown chakra to really open with great comfort. You may call out to your guardian angel, your soul, your guides, your guardians, your soul family say, one of you who cares about my most joyous well-being, who cares about my healthiest, happiest way of being. Come up here and nestle in the very top of my crown chakra, nestle in my energy field, so that only those who care about my best well-being and are coming to me with the highest possible frequency of love, so that at this moment, I may enjoy the, the, the joy, the happiness, the kindness of pure love in my being. Only those who come to me with this frequency are invited, are allowed. And whoever comes near me Bring this frequency for all of us so that we can share it together. Enhance the frequency, the emanation of joyous love. And invite your crown chakra to just stretch up as comfortably and as high as it likes. Notice this line of energy. It may look like a column. It may look like a coil or a rope, a tube. It may just look like glowing light or sparkling light, but there's energy flowing into you. And you see some is just flowing around where it is and some is flowing up from you. This is your karmic line. This is your soul's line that connects you, your physical body to your soul. This is your energy. This is you. This is as much a part of who you are as your arms and your legs this is a part of you. So in whatever way at this moment you are sensing, be it visually, emotionally, through sound, through colors, through images, or just a feeling, take a moment and connect with this energy that's flowing through the top of your head from your soul above to you and from you to your soul above. If you feel any pain or pressure, acknowledge it. Explain that this is a safe connection. No protection is needed in here 
that it's okay for your body to relax and connect with your soul. You are safe. You are protected on a higher level so you can relax on your physical level. And just connect. Invite your body to open up and relax even more. If you feel any pain or pressure, this is very natural. Our bodies are so used to protecting us. When outside energy comes in, they just want to come and cover up and protect and hide. But it's not necessary now. Now we open up and embrace. Invite your energy to feel your awareness to connect with the top of your head so light and airy and expanding. The more you notice it, the more you realize the cells, the molecules, they just feel like they're spreading out. They're each catching a breath. Oh. <sighs> feels so good to vibrate with a little space around me, expanding, spreading out, putting all this beautiful energy above the top of your head to really flow in. Bring your awareness up, higher, up a little higher and you'll find another orb, another glowing mass, another intense area, just like the chakras in your body. It feels different because it's not in your physical, it's in your etheric. So the frequency will be higher just as this gong is resonant because it's physical. We have resonant chakras in our body that are physical, but the frequency outside your body is more delicate seeming. Although you'll notice when you connect in, it's powerful with action. Allow your awareness to go up to your karmic chakra. Just bring your awareness and what does it feel like? What senses are awakened with this chakra? And what chakras within your body are responding? Give yourself a moment to just comfortably connect. Probe it a little bit. Give yourself a moment to really experience. Go up a little further, a little deeper. What 
does your karmic chakra feel like? Are you finding it to be open and glowing? Are you finding it to have knots or burls in it? Does the energy pour in any one direction or another? Does it have any messages to whisper to you? Let your awareness go into this chakra and all the way through it to the edge. Feel all around it. You'll notice, just like the chakras in your body, this one, it's not just an orb of light. It's got lines of energy flowing through it, and it's got connections around it, outside of it. You'll see some of these connections to your karmic chakra Connect to your soul's body, your energetic body that is around your physical body. And some connect to your physical body, either directly down or around your body and then connecting in. Because your karma can surround you. Follow the line of energy that goes like an orb in all directions around your body, the layer, down to below your feet, just below your root chakra. As you allow this shell of energy, which is full of life and very active, to start at your karmic chakra and flow through you as well as around you to below your feet to your earth magic chakra. Let this energy just become like a living orb around you with a pole of light, a pillar of light flowing through you, a cord. And let all this energy just lovingly come and nestle your earth magic chakra, where your animal spirit guides and your connection to the nature, to the trees, the plants, the rivers and oceans, to all the animals, the birds, the four-legged, the fishes, the worms, insects, the breeze, the sunlight, the clouds, all of this connects just below your feet. Feel this for a moment. Feel how resonant and earthy this chakra is. You can feel how your earth magic chakra and your karmic chakra, they harmonize together beautifully, even though they're in different frequencies. Their resonances are compatible and support enable each other. Mm -hmm. 
invite this earth energy, earth magic to flow up through your root chakra into your belly. Rise up to your heart, your love of nature, your love of animals, your love of a gentle breeze kissing your face on a warm day. Invite this energy to flow up through your body, through your throat, your mind, your third eye, the top of your head. Invite it to flow directly up to your karmic chakra. Give yourself a moment to let the two energies merge together. Powerful earth magic with divine karma becoming one. And then flowing back into your body so that you are fully connected with the magic, the sacred essence of spirit from both sides. Your connection to earth, which gives you structure, stability, the powerful integrity and accountability, and the karmic magic from divine, which guides your path, lets you know where you're drawn for the total evolution of your soul. Blend them as one and fill your body. Breathe in. Explore inside your body. All of this integrated magic, power, guidance. Your soul. Feel inside you, if there's any part of you that is pained or compressed or uncomfortable, give it permission to just resolve and release so that you may really look in your body and see what lessons rise up, what advice, what suggestions, what messages are here for you at this moment. Whatever message you receive, ask it. How do I apply this to connecting me with my highest state of love and joy? What of this message is useful for me for just being my happiest, most joyous self? Whatever you receive, accept it. Imprint on this feeling. Yeah. 
And again, invite your root chakra to spread out deep and wide. Your crown chakra to open high and wide. All the beautiful sacred essences and energies to flow through you. Breathe in. Return to this space. Return to this time. Return to yourself. Give your body a little bit of stretching and movement as you are reintegrating. Maybe rub a little energy into your hands and wash them over your face or just hold them over your eyes. I am so impressed with you guys. This was not a basic meditation. Give yourself the credit that is due to you. This was very powerful stuff. Integrating your body that is outside of your physical body. That's good. And for those of you who asked me about kundalini yoga, this is not a kundalini exercise we did, but this is the kind of powerful stuff. If you practice kundalini, this is the kind of thing that becomes very comfortable for you to do because kundalini is like meditation and yoga and the flow of energy and connecting the physical to the non -phys your physical body, to your non-physical body, to your spiritual body. So, um, yes, that's why kundalini yoga is considered dangerous because when you practice kundalini yoga, you become very connected to self and to know yourself through and through is to be powerful and power is dangerous especially those who don't want you to have power. I want you to have power. Um, okay, so if anyone has questions, feel welcome. Um, yeah, the connection, um, actually on, what is it, uh, July 10th, we have someone coming out here to give us newer internet. It turns out the internet that we have is like, decades old so we're not getting a lot of power here to the house um and even though i'm hardlined in it seems like whenever there's a rainstorm here we don't so on we have an appointment on uh july 10th someone is coming to give us like an upgraded wi-fi and uh internet and phone line um so i don't know if going in and out is because of what's happening in general or where you are or if it's because of us or if it's just we did super high powerful energy work or all of the above so i do want to mention this little thing that you can buy at like pharmacies or on amazon it's um a head scratcher but i'm telling you when you are working with crown chakra opening exercise Oh my God, I keep this by my desk. And when I'm getting ready to meditate and I want to open up my crown, especially for those of you who get like head pressure or head pain when, or like pressure or pain behind your eyeballs when you are opening up, this is a good reminder to your head to be light and airy. And sometimes when I meditate, I'll just have it on. And then every once in a while, I'll, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll move it. And um, another thing, one of my favorite books, The Return of the Bird Tribes. If you are really interested in seeing uh, how earth magic 
ancient magic can really like build up and like connect with our modern life. This book is so beautiful and it's like full of amazing, amazing information. Um, so I definitely recommend it is, I, I don't know how many times I've read it. It's, it's, you know, obviously Native American shamanic, but it is so, so beautiful. And it's all about like earth magic and eternal connection and the layers of connection. So just wanted to mention, mention this one. Really beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Um, next week, we're not going to expand out further. We're going to work with weaving the energy through our bodies and to the chakras just outside of our bodies. And so next week we're going to do more Kundalini style work of activating and weaving. It doesn't do any good to go higher if we're not structured and powerful, right? Right. So we're going to work with what we've got. Um, and again, I'll put a link to where you can access all of the previous videos and some other ones that I have. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for all the nice words. Uh, so that way, if you want to go back and like review anything, you can. Um, and we'll uh, next week, we're going to just get everything flowing, activated and amplified. Mwah! Thank you, guys. I love you and have a absolutely lovely. Thank you, Nazi. Thank you. Thank you all for all your kind comments. Thanks. I you have no idea. Like. I just got to say, like, you know, when I teach in the old days before COVID-19, I'd be in a room full of people and I could always like read the energy of the people, read the energy of the room. You know, if I'm like playing a gong and if I see people twitching and like, uh, I'm like, oh, maybe don't play the gong. Or if I see people going, oh, I'm like, oh, more gong. So it's, um, it's a little hard doing this way where I have no idea. I'm putting it out there. I have no idea. So your feedback, your feedback, thank you so much, is like whew, completing the cycle back. <laughs> thank you. You help power me up. And I don't just mean like compliments, which I love. I love. I love the, the thank yous and the loves and all that. But <clears throat> if you have questions or comments or like I had trouble with this. Can we focus on this next week or whatever? I love that too. So thank you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love you. And, you know, today is the 20th of 2020. Once every month we get to have a 2020 20 day. Enjoy it. <laughs> Bye.